Welcome back to the Intellect Stream Masters here. As we've already had one player advance through to group stages, and we're on search to grab the second with our next series coming up. It's going to be Liquid Snoot versus Rocket Hyun. Another ZVZ Apollo, and I'm pretty sure we're going to see more roaches. How likely do you think we're going to see Mutas, though? Mutas, very likely. Uh, very popular within the matchup as of recently. I heard that Mutas are all the rage in ZVZ. All the rage, as Maynard has been telling us a little bit earlier on. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be another cool matchup. I'm quite sure this is going to be an entertaining one as well because both of these players have had a long history against each other. They've traded wins left and right over the years, but I'd like to say over the last year or so, in the last 12 months, Snoot has dominated Sean, met in many a different tournament, and has more than often come out the victor. Well, why do you think that is? Did he just kind of figure him out? I remember him once upon a time talking about or saying something along those lines, basically explaining that for him, Hyun was very predictable, and that's what made it so easy, yep. so to speak, uh, when facing him. I think so. I mean, if he says that's the reason, then that's the reason. There's no need for me to even try to guess one. I um, was testing you, Apollo. You, well, you, you, you answered it. You asked and nicely. answered it. You, you, you asked and answered, so I'll, t I'll take that one. Uh, but Snoot, like you mentioned, is, has had this very good record and has kind of understood how to play against Hyun. But I feel that this tournament specifically, we're going to see a bit of a fresher style coming out from Hyun. He hasn't been very active recently. He's not playing in Pro League. He's not in the GSL Star League. He really hasn't played that many games this year at all. And he played very few towards the end of last year as well. So coming into this, it's kind of refreshing for Hyun not to be at a tournament every weekend, which he's been doing for the last three years to take some time. Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like there might be a lot of pressure on him because if you compare this year to last year, you know, he was a force to be reckoned with. He was rank one in WCS points for quite a while too. Yep. Whereas now, he's, as you said, he's not been playing really in too many tournaments, if any at all. So do you think he's maybe putting a lot of pressure on himself going into this, thinking, well, this is, this is my one time here. We are already quite a few, I guess, a few weeks into the year. I need to perform here and now. Otherwise, I'll fall too far behind on WCS points, maybe not even make BlizzCon. That's, that's one approach he could be taking, but knowing Chiani is a very relaxed and funny character, oh, yeah. so I'm not sure how much pressure he would have put on himself, but I definitely know that Snoot is very comfortable in his game right now and across all three matchups, and he loves Zerg versus Zerg. He's very confident, he's back there smiling and, and is expecting to leave the open bracket today. Both of these players actually could uh, regardless of the outcome of this match. And uh, yeah, I think it'd be nice to see these two guys go through. Definitely some of the biggest fans' favorites and also guys that could do very well uh, in the group stages against pretty much anybody. All right, well, game one is started in our fourth or fifth series of the day. I'm not sure which one anymore. But this is the match to find out our second player to advance into group stages tomorrow and the day after. Up here to the top left, playing for Team Liquid, it's Snoot. And then down here to the bottom right-hand side is the Red Zerg player, sponsored by Rocket. It is Hyun. Both players very successful so far. Not dropped a single map throughout this tournament in the open bracket. Hyun going 2-0 versus Czech, 2-0 versus a former Intel Extreme Masters champion in Revival. And we've covered both of the Snoot games, and he's looked very comfortable as well. 2-0 versus Daisy, and with that 2-0 versus Ian as well. Man, those Zergs, they're doing really well in this open bracket. Like, I mean, we knew that they're outnumbering the opponents with, uh, by a large margin, but in both open brackets, ZVZ finals in the winner bracket. So yeah. that means that uh, True advanced in the other one with the win against Linok, and now we're going to see another one of the Zergs uh, yeah. advance, which I guess is nice for them. They're doing well. Yeah, I think we're going to have four out of four Zergs today. I'm quite confident in that. I, did, uh, I mentioned it before as well as... I don't think the Protoss players are strong enough to beat these guys in the open bracket, and Jack G is going to have a hard time against these multiple different circuits. Yeah, as well. Jack G actually already lost to Soul Key, so he's out. So yeah. now it's only up to Hero in, in open bracket number one to possibly beat Soul Key and, and then Lee Knock. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty hard. And then in open bracket two, it's Daisy, as he's already knocked out Patience, knocked out one of the Protoss players, and Daisy currently 1 1 against Revival. So. Very Zerg heavy in the open bracket, and we should be seeing four out of four. But there could be a there could be a surprise. Daisy actually beat Revival two one, so he only has to beat to beat Czech and or one Hyun of these. Or yeah, exactly one <laughs> of these. Only has to. 
Man, these Protosses, they killed each other when they really should have been helping each other. I guess they didn't have a choice. Didn't have a choice. Um, very standard builds here uh, on this map size. Uh, specifically, the size of it here, early spawning pools, not as successful due to that. Uh, so we've got the hatchery first, followed by the gas, then pool, coming out for snoot. And then it's just very similar for Hyun, pool, and then gas very swiftly afterwards. What do you think on this map? Uh, how does ZVZ play differently than on any other maps from like the mid game? Well, I think the difference is that there is no early game. <laughs> I guess that's the biggest difference. You very rarely see a lot of Zergling bailing attacks and you just kind of move into the mid part of the game. Uh, and it's usually a lot of Roach play as well. Mutilus play is very good and common when you are able to keep your opponent away from a third base because that's when they get enough money to start to counter you. On this map, it's kind of difficult to do that and in these positions as well, more so. So I think that it traditionally, most of the time, is going to be the traditional setup of Roach Wars. Okay. Snoot's getting uh, quite a few links here with the speeds. Might want to... Actually, is he going to make more after this? Yeah, he's uh, pulling them up here. And Xian is going to poke forward. What information does it's he gonna get? It's going to be hard to hide this. Yeah, and if he sees it, then it's going to be a lot easier to deal with. He sees two, and he's looking around the back, and he sees the rest of them now. So he knows exactly what's going on. Sees a lot of... So Double spine. Two spines. It's going to start to wall off this ramp. In a nice location as well, around the ramp. Yeah. Where he could just say, yeah, wall it off with Queens inside of it, transfer drones to the main possibly, and behind this snoot, he can knows that there is pretty much no chance this could ever work, so he starts droning up again. Yeah, I think this is more than uh, an easy hold here. Is yeah. Xion going to overcommit to defense though? Like yeah, in terms of drones, if he starts falling quite far behind. Yeah. That's, what, that's what, definitely one problem that could happen here. Do you think that Snoot had anticipated all of this would happen? Surely you don't go... You said there is no early game on this because this kind of aggression will almost never work. Everybody would yeah. see it. But if you look at it, Snoot probably knew this would be spotted and that behind this, Hyun might overreact, get too much defense, not make enough drones. Yep. And in this case, 35 drones to 20, more than 10 drone difference yep. here for Snoot. And now third base coming in. Definitely, definitely what you said could be true. Or in the fact that Snoot hoped that Hyun would be greedy, knowing that there's not going to be any early aggression. Either way, Snoot is going to pull ahead here. Very late Zergling speed coming in there for Hyun, who put on the emergency defense. And Snoot in a good in a good spot due to that. Hyun spent, what, 300 minerals on trying to build three spines. I think he may have cancelled one towards the end there. Yeah, but he had to use drones to make them. He made a ton of links, way yep. too much. So he had way more links than Snoot, which yeah. means he could have countered except he didn't have speed, so he couldn't. Yeah. So this worked out perfectly for Snoot. I mean, he didn't win the game yet, but surely he gained some nice economic lead out of this uh, transaction. Yeah, faster plus one attack here. I'm mean, gonna be expecting a faster layer coming out from Snoot as well. That should be starting up very, very shortly. A good setup here for the Norwegian. He's a uh, script spreading like a madman, by the way. Five script turns. All those what's, defensive what's queens, that? man. He didn't know what to do with them. Yeah, he's got to do something with these queens that he built. You know, it's not just the drones he lost and the links he built and the spines he made. It was also the additional queens added on too. Nice surround here. Gonna get one of the queens, possibly the other one as well. I guess all of those links that he made with the speed finally kicking in, he's found some use for them. Yeah. He could have attacked his own queens and then transfused them, by the way. Yeah, that's, that's something else he could have done with the units and the queens he made. <laughs> Uh, but the setup right now, very strong here for Snoot. Xian, got to use these two spines that he had earlier as well to really protect this and hopefully play greedy towards this third base, but... Did Snoot? he make the road trying too late, by the way? There is road just going across the map. And his road run is halfway through done. Surely those spines should be enough to hold? They should and be with the Queens too. It's, I'd, I'd it's say fake, that right? if one thing is late, is Snoot's layer. I think he definitely should have got that a lot earlier. A lot, lot earlier. Hey, this was a fake, okay. I was... I was worried for a second that Snoot act might actually want to go for like a seven roach attack without speed, but no, no, he, he was just faking it, yeah. trying to force units. Sean definitely trying to play greedy here to catch up, using the queens and spines for his defense here. Double evolution chamber, trying to build lots of drones up here. Got 57 drones to 51. But there's going to be a couple of things in benefit for Snoot here. He's going to have timing windows with his attack lead, and also because he's working on one evolution chamber compared to two, in between the 1-1 one, one and 2-2 two, two being built is a huge timing window of a lot of roaches to hit too. By the way, Hyun, I, I really think he didn't like getting supply blocked here. Five overlords as Snoot uh, is already getting any face station pits. Do no you think that's it. 
Do you think that's very early, or does he want to go into Infestors for sure? Or? He may play Swarm Hosts. You think so? On this map, I, I, I feel like it's definitely a good choice with the way the bases are set up up to the fourth. Yes. Even fifth, to be honest. The fifth I mean, is he, supposed to be hard to take on this map, but good Zergs, they do it so well that it's not actually that hard. Either way, it, it could be Swarm Hosts or it could be Infestors. That's the choice here that Snoots has laid out in front of him. I think the Infestors might be better here because of being cross-positioned. It's going to yeah. be hard to get the Swarm Hosts very effective. Aggressively, they're going to be good defensively, but aggressively harder. I really feel like in ZVZ, when Snoot gets lots of Fortress and Infestors, he might be maybe the very best ZVZ player in the world. I remember quite a few games out of him. Some DreamHack games against Jadong, yeah. which he didn't necessarily win, but showed some very good things in. But he's got to be hitting the fungal growths here. He's building the five infestors very early. They're going to have a lot of energy very early on as well. But Hyun with double sets of upgrades coming in. Baneling Nest for Hyun, by the way. And Baneling Nest. So one of the more common plays in Zerg vs. Zerg is Roach Hydra, which is countered by Banelings here. So if Hyun was to be expecting the more common play of Roach Hydra, then building Banelings is great here yeah. to be able to get the Banelings speed into you know, attacking in. But Snoot choosing the Infestors early is the counter to Banelings. It really feels like Snoot is winning all the mind games here so far in, uh, in, in this game and series. And he's going to hide them, he's going to pull them to have make sure they have enough energy. And maybe does push Hyun into building excessive amounts of Banelings here. Every time you say pull, I just picture you screaming with your high-pitched voice, pull the boys, Apollo. Yeah, not today, though. Not <laughs> today. Our one Terran's been eliminated, Jack G, unfortunately. Hive starting now uh, for Snoot here. So this is going to be a, at least quite a bit earlier than his opponents. And the Hydra is then as well. So already thinking about getting uh, that plus three missile attacks as yep. he starts the plus two, which is going to get... Oh, I think, oh, it's back, Todd, it's back. I don't know what happened there, I think I lost my headset. <laughs> Just kind of turned off. I, it happened to me too, it's okay. Did it happen to you too? Very good. Oh, okay. We're um, back. We're back. I don't know if anyone else, maybe everyone heard us, it was just us that went out, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> everyone thinks we're crazy. Um, yeah, so Snoop building up the, the better composition much earlier. Roach, Hydra, and Infester compared to only Roach and Baneling here. It can still work for Hyun, but he has to manage to hit the Banelings, right? Yeah, it's going to be really hard. But then again, he has good Chris Fred, and if Hyun is just the one waiting and Snoot attack across the map, there is some potential for flank or even sur surround. Look at this, the Chris Fred is merging, Apollo. It's happening. It's, it's, a, it's a lava creep would love be, line. Wouldn't it be funny if like, when this happens, you get vision on the entire Chris Fred of your opponent and his Cryptoomers? They become all one. together. The game is a draw. <laughs> well, th th this right now is bad position for Hyun, by the way, because he attacks through the middle yeah. here, which is clearly very easy to fungal. He needs to find a bit of a better position. There are changelings in the mix here. And here we go, the fungals. Gonna have to land well on these bailings. Great fungal oh there my by God. Snoot. Absolutely beautiful fungal. Catching so many roaches and bailings as well. A lot of the Banelings do break through, though. They got they got fungled once, but they do break through afterwards. There's not that many roaches for Snoot here. There's a lot of Hydralis and these Infestors, so he might get pushed back. Yeah, the fungal started off well there, but I definitely think the Banelings started to break through and he wasn't able to chain correctly. And Hyun is going to win the fight in the center there. But Snoot, on four bases, with the better economy, is starting to rebuild up to what he lost, but he did lose a lot of expensive units there. And yeah, with the plus three already on the way, I feel like he's... Snoot was able to complete that. Oh. He would be in great shape to win this game, okay. but Hyun's looking to do some damage with the roaches that he has. Yeah. And getting Burrow is very smart here because so many of his roaches are injured, by the way. And getting Tunneling Klaus, is yeah. there an Overseer around? If he's if he used... Yeah, okay. there is. Yeah. No, but, okay, there no, might be opportunities there. to use that, though. Uh, but plus three attack being worked on here for Snoot still has technically the better composition. Just needs to catch up in numbers, which he's not too far behind in either. And with Hyun healing up those roaches. The Roach King, where his, na his name well, yeah. going for pretty much exclusively Roaches here and looking to maybe try and end the game, or at least do damage here. He has to. Yeah, well, these uh, Infestors are very close to having a Fungal available. There are a couple of Hydras in here, too. And this is a good timing here for Hyun before Fungals are properly ready. Now they are. And to be honest, a the lot Conquest of these really armies good. not together. The Conquest for uh, Hyun here was really, really good here at first. Snoot's going to rely entirely on the reinforcements to defend this. He's so close to finishing his upgrades as well. 
And right now, with the reinforcements coming across the map, Hyun does have a large army supply, but that will give time for Snoot to get equal in terms of upgrades and hopefully push forward when he gets that plus three attack. 11 Hydralis coming into play here for Snoot. If they join up with his army with this plus three attack, they're going to be dealing out a lot of damage to Hyun's army, who is consistently rolling over with Roaches here, looking to end this one on this mid-tier composition, this mid-tier set of roaches. But here's that plus three attack 10 seconds away. Yeah, and Hyun didn't even saturate the Gazis on his false base where Snoot did. So his time is running out here for Hyun. He has to go for it. Yeah, and the Infestor misses the fungal growth. Only gets three roaches here, but the Hydra is starting to come through. Infested Terrans help front the line to assist the Hydra list in not dying straight away here. And Hyun gets pushed back. And now, now Snoot's in, in a good position. He, if he can, you know, regenerate some of the yeah. energy on the Infestors he's got left over. I don't think he has Burrow, though, Snoot. Uh, I think he has Burrow, but not totally close. Okay. But healing those Roaches would go a long way to helping him winning this game here, potentially. Uh, another Snoot attack Snoot has way in. more drones, by the way. His maxed out yeah. army is going to be definitely much lower than Hyun's. And another attack coming in here, but I think Snoot's going to finally have too much here. He went in the storm against Hyun in, with the Hydralis and Infested Terrans at the front here doing extra damage. He should be able to hold this position, and then he's got plus three armor on the way. He's got the Hydra uh, movement speed on the way, too, so he can move to the other side to, to be aggressive. The Tonling Claws attack has not worked here for Hyun either. And Snoot just has the better tech, the better technology yeah. in this game. Pulling quite far ahead in supply now. He's going to start Burrow, finally. Realizing oh, that he needs, needs it for these roaches and plus three carapace. Mm -hmm. But I really think that at this point, he can basically just max out, move across the map, and go for the kill. After he has defended the, those sharks, I guess. Yeah, still looking for entrance here. Hyun knows that he's behind and is hoping to try to find an opening here, but Snoot is chasing him down in every angle. He's got this left-hand side cover, the main base covered, and probably the right-hand side cover too. Three attacks at once here from Hyun. He's getting a spore somewhere. I guess he wants to make sure no kind of turning class uh, allows Hyun to come back in this game. Lots of infested Terran being used here. And Hyun is just losing supply yeah. left and right, not doing any damage, really. Yeah, he's on six gases. He doesn't even have enough income to really make a big tech switch or at least oh, big Oh, he drones closed the door. He killed the rocks. He You're locked him in. not leaving anywhere. <laughs> and this is just very good defense in multiple locations here from Snoot. And he knows that eventually Hyun's going to start to run dry in this. It's going to be 3-3 versus 2-2. He can't keep sending units to die. And Snoot stabilizing can go for one final attack. Four roaches still can hinder Snoot a little bit, but... He turns around and he's going to come to pick off the last couple of remaining roaches. Almost double the army supply here, uh, Snoots. 130 to 72, yeah. It's it's Protoss time, it's Ave move time. It is, it is that time. And Hyun knows that is inevitable and is sending out another attack to the left-hand side here. To be honest, with the money that Snoot has in the bank, he can attack with what he has and defend with the rest of his reinforcements that he can build with the money that he's got saved up. Hyun going for an infestation pit at the 21st minutes. With that much of a supply de deficit, uh, definitely hopeful, but I mean, you have to do something. At this point, his mass roach just yeah. isn't working anymore. Snoot's being very patient, though. I really wonder why he's not attacking yet. We, he's, he seems wor maybe he's misjudging the game a little bit in, in the sense that he's thinking that Hyun might not be as far behind as he actually is. Yeah. Oh, but I miss. No, comes back and sees that. Well, this is what Hyun wants, though, is to yeah. keep dragging Snoot around while continuing to expand. He's got that fifth base on the way. He's looking to pick off Snoot's fifth as well, but we'll have to trade for a lot of his roaches. Snoot, very nice block with his own roaches there to prevent Hyun from escaping to the right-hand side. How many times have these guys met in tournaments, by the way? I see you looked up history, and I see a never-ending game history. It is a never-ending list over three years. They met like 20 times or something in tournaments. Yeah. It's a lot. So insane. Yeah, Hyun gonna lose units left and right. Snoot, I guess defending is the right move here because he's killing so much and really not losing anything. Yeah, and but if Hyun breaks in and kills a hatchery, re-expands, continues to keep throwing units over, then gets up more money, more income, more units yeah. than Snoot does, then actually... He's now. Yeah, then, then Hyun starts to drag into this game again. And so for Snoot, it's either defend and defend 100% and don't take any losses while defending or go attack. Yeah. It's two decisions at this point. He can't keep, he can't keep being run around. We've seen Snoot in the past in the Intel Extreme Masters play very well, but also sometimes be quite far ahead, and then his opponent's coming back. Mostly game yeah. by game, you know, in series where he was up 2-0 like against Flash, but it's happened uh, in specific maps as well. I really hope it's not going to be one of those times here I for mean, him. The Infestors are coming out, the Hydralis Den's coming in, the plus three attacks coming in. Hyun has a fifth, Snoot only has four. 
all these things are starting to connect for Hyun. Just the consistent waves of Rochi's over and over, over, keeping Snoot on the defensive. Hyun is starting to equalize with everything that is benefiting Snoot yeah. for the last five minutes or so. Hyun had doubled the army supply at some point. He really could have just have attacked and ended it. Snoot, uh... And you know, Hyun's not quite ready to fight yet. If he fights a direct engagement on his side of the map, he's going to lose. So he knows he's got to keep running around. Is he going to go swap us? I see he starts one. Well, I think that's very brave. Hyun's pretty broke, by the way, in comparison. Snoot has so much yeah. money. Maybe he should get a lot of spines to defend back at home and then finally attack. Well, I think he's going to finally make that move. He's on the other side of the map. The Zell Noga Tower splits up his army to two. Clearing Crete with one set of his army. Oh, he's trying to catch the roaches that potentially could be up there, maybe? Yeah. But there's yeah. nothing there. Where is he going? Chasing oh, no, those. they are. That game sense, man. Chasing those. But he can't chase with his entire army here. He leaves himself completely vulnerable, that fifth especially. Where's the overseer? Follow the army. Do your job. The overseer's here. Nope. I'm going to go the other way. Ooh, <coughs> might catch. Might run into this. The Infester, Snoot needs to react quickly. Just gonna lose one before he throws the first frongle, but now Hyun, he has his own Infester, so he's gonna look to trade here as good as he can. Well, Snoot's entire force is here. He comes back from his defending oh, area. He's, he's trying to bring down these Infesters, and he's gonna pick up a lot of these units, and he's chasing this one down, and that was a lot of army supply there that Hyun just lost. Dropping down at 85 compared to 158 for Snoot, who finally, for the first time in a long time, can go attack himself. And with his 3 3 upgrades to 2 2, his better Roach and Hydra County should be looking to end this one. Yeah, this is going to hit even before the plus 3 of Yun finishes. And uh, Snoot's even had a Spire on the way behind it, so was already thinking about a bit of a transition. Yeah. Possibly into Broodlords. But it looks like he's broken Hyun here. Hyun not having enough units. He's going for a counter attack on the other side of the map, but with the money that Snoot has and the lava that he's definitely built up over time, he'll have enough to be able to defend this. It looks like Snoot. Staring down at map number one victory. Very cautious, very patient play. Not wanting to mess this one up as he, as harsh as it sounds, has done before in the Intel Stream Masters, especially if you think back to Toronto. But here we do see Snoop. One game up here against Hyun. One game away from moving into group play, which he's been so often, every single time this season. It's pretty impressive. You know, we say this every day, but the open bracket is really, really stacked. Every single tournament, we say that. Yeah. But if you look at the player list, like, there is no way you can say otherwise. Guys like Solky, Linux, yeah. they're all in this open bracket, and it's just so insane to see, especially a non Korean, do so well up against so many good players in Snoot. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of more awesome uh, games coming today, and hopefully, Snoot can challenge with Harsten and Sen in group play if he's able to go through Hyun here. And we'll find out if he does when we come back from this very quick commercial break. Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters here. We're in the middle of Snoot versus Hyun. Snoot currently leading one game to zero against Hyun. Just now one game away from qualifying for stage two, the group stage of the Intel Extreme Masters, the top 16, where WCS points and prize pool are finally awarded. Can Hyun make the comeback, though, to surprise Snoot and push him down to the lower bracket, where there's a couple of feisty players looking 
And some think they've already advanced through to the next stage. Feisty players, huh? You're referring to uh, <laughs> to a certain tweet we just saw? Yeah, you know, Daisy's in a lower bracket. you got Hero and Sulky in the other open bracket. We'll be playing very, very shortly as well. Lots of intense action here in the open bracket of the Intel Extreme Masters. Day one of five. And as we go into map number two now between these two players up here in the red, it's, of course, Rockat Hyun. Very appropriate Rockat sponsorship and images at the bottom of the screen there. And then down here to the bottom left-hand side is the blue Zero player here on Overgrowth. And very appropriate HyperX symbol down there. <laughs> it is Snoots. It's all timed out perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> if they're both sponsored by the same sponsors as the tournament, who should win? It's like, you know, Bomber won Battlegrounds. Yeah. He, he, he got extra motivation out of knowing that basically his sponsor was sponsoring the tournament as well. So I guess these guys, they start on equal grounds. Man, Hyun versus Snoot, this feels like El Clasico in football. It's like similar, you know, they meet all the time. It's like such a big match. They are two fans' favorites. Yeah. And it's weird because if you think about it, like a while back, they will almost always like have been meeting very deep or late in the tournaments. But yeah. now it's actually just in the open brackets. Winner brackets, finals, sure, but it's the open bracket, not the group stage. That goes to show how things change in StarCraft and, you know, sometimes you don't always do that well in the qualifiers. Snoot, in this case, didn't make it out of the European qualifier. It was originally Cass and 4GG. Yep. And then Cass, unfortunately, couldn't attend. So uh, our good Dutch friend stepped in, uh, who was third in the qualifier overall, so naturally took the next place to play in the main tournament. And what a main tournament we have. Players such as CJ Hero, you've got Life who's come over, Morrow makes his debut, Parting comes back to another Intel Extreme Masters. It's going to be a great couple of days from here on out. Are you hyped about Morrow? I am. I am. I hope he can perform as well as he does in Pro League, GSL and Star League, but... It's a different type of tournament. We'll see if you can. All right, what can you tell me about the build orders here? How are you feeling about overgrowth um, and what they're doing? So we see here Snoot's taken the more, you know, safety guard off approach because he's just gone for this hatchery first here. Any early spawning pool could have threatened his series or it'll at least threaten the map. Or as Hyun played a bit more cautious, decided to go for the spawning pool first uh, and then from there, decided to, 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 to go into the circling speed. <clears throat> Overall, just very similar positions here from both. You know, the previous game really feels to me like the textbook of how these guys like to play ZVZ. You know, Snoot with the Infestors almost every single time, yeah. uh, with his Roaches, this time maybe earlier than usual. And Hyun, a lot more of, uh, I want to say melee, you know, obviously like rain. Roaches are ranged units, but you know, melee are in the sense that he loves to brawl. He loves yeah. to fight, he loves to make a ton of roaches, and he loves to fight with them. And that's what he did. He made roaches, he made bailings, and yeah. in the end, he just didn't walk out. He got countered. So, going into this game, if he wants to do the same thing, he's going to have to do something pretty damn well here and there, or maybe find a weakness in Snoot's defense. If he, if he wants it to work against a Snoot who's just so good overall, both in defense and in offense. Even though in the previous game he dragged it out maybe a little bit longer than it should have. Yeah. Snoot has decided to build quite a few Zerglings very early on again. He scouted his opponent's gas. Maybe same thing as last game, but this time instead of trying to trick, he He's actually goes for it. it. Yeah, I mean, he knows his opponent's bringing in gas. He knows his opponent yeah. has 150 gas that he's mined, so that's Zergling speed and potentially a Bailing Nest. So is that why Snoot's decided to go back into drones here? Because he did, he knows that his opponent should have a bailing nest and they shouldn't work, but... Yeah, quite possibly. But he's still adding on more links here. I think it's just because we are seeing these units come down. He's going to have the bailing nest earlier and he's getting more Zerglings now. Yeah, and on this, this map, it's very common, though. though. Don't you feel so? In, in ZVZ, I've seen so many like mass links early on trying to make something happen. Yeah. It's a, uh, an easy way to pick up a win without going past the 10-minute mark. And we all like the easy win. And everyone loves an easy win. All right, well, currently, Spinecrawler coming in that Snoot has seen there from Hyun. And both players just kind of feeling each other out. Snoot's going to morph a couple of Bane Links here, but he doesn't yeah. have that much. I think he, he realized that the Bane Link Nest of Hyun was pretty late, so he's going to try to get maybe a detonation on some of these drones. And the Hyun, I think he knows, yeah, he knows about those Bane Links. He saw them with his Overlord morphing over there, so he has to go into the main. He's losing mining time now. And, oh my god, uh, quite okay. a lot going down there. 
I thought that was going to be scarier than it was here for uh, for Hyun and Snoot could do more, but... But Snoot's just been droning up throughout all of this. Um, doesn't have a spine at all. He's pretty uh, comfortable, I would yeah, say, He's going to get position. countered now. Yeah, that's... Yeah, look at those links on the minimap. They're, they're headed for him. Uh, he's going to try and make a wall here. Needs one more structure. There's, Ooh, there's, the, uh, there's the wall. Knock, knock. And... Yeah, Hyun no just has to go back. Eight more drones, by the way, by Snoot in the meantime. He knew that Hyun was not going to come yeah. in anymore to this. And uh, yeah, with the double evolution chamber on the way, he's going to be able to ah, upgrade perfect. a whole bit. Perfect defensive bane links there from Snoot. Very, very good defense. And the next part of the game moves on. We've moved past this. Both players defended well enough not to fall far behind in this game. So third base going to come in for Snoot. He's finished up with the Evolution Chamber. He can get that plus one attack. He's gone up to layer first, bear in mind. So Roach Speed is going to be the first thing that he wants to get. Or very early on. With the plus one uh, earlier than this? Okay, never mind. He starts it about the same time. The layer timing doesn't seem to be that important in ZPZ because usually by the time somebody completes speed and crosses the map, you will have kind of caught up with that. And even like, you know, speed when your opponent is defending, like, you know, on creep, so to speak, to rejoin forces, doesn't seem that important. So I can understand how some Zerks kind of delay their lair and are not really penalized for it. I don't oh. think that cancel is going to happen, Apollo. No, I don't think it's going to happen either at this point. So just very feeling each other out a little bit here, just continuing on with the Actually, next part of the game. some more links are coming across the map, but uh, Roaches should yeah. be out on time. I mean, Snoop's already getting ready to drone towards his third base here. 1-1 one, one started here for Snoot, which is definitely nice ahead. He's always ahead in workers, man. I really feel like at some point, Snoot being a red teammate and watching his games, he was like, this guy understands how he's supposed That's to be played. He's I like, drone. I'm just going to drone like a madman every single time and uh, yeah, do it well. At this stage of the game, it's it's about trying to squeeze in drones without over-droning to lose to an attack from an opponent who just builds roaches. So. Right now, Hyun is, you know, stretching out a little bit further with his drone production. What is Snoot looking to do? And he's just looking at adding on more roaches here. Takes another gas, so goes up to three. That's pretty comfortable for a lot of roach production being on these... Uh, oh, four gases, sorry. 11 drones for... Uh, Five, six gases. For Hyun here a second ago, and 11 roaches for Snoot. So mm. they're both kind of mixing in, you know, drones, then roaches, drones, then roaches, back and forth. That looks very weird, by the way, that, that wall and base here with the spine being a little bit at the front and no creep spread. Those, those life links, man. Snoots took that from life as well. well. He moves in here, gets three drone kills, forces the drones to come off the line as well. Nine more drones being made by Snoot, by the way, right now. Still droning up. He hasn't made enough just yet. I feel like in ZVZ, Snoots is very reluctant to stop droning up up until he has three bases well saturated with the six gases and 16 mineral drones in every single base. He really loves to reach that amount. And then from there, he really doesn't mind, you know, taking up a little bit more, even taking some more bases, but not droning up, getting units out. Yeah. Well, he's in a perfect position now with his economy to start going Roach Hydra compared to Hyun, who I'm not sure if he's a little bit behind in workers. It looks like it is uh, comparing the income here. Well, it's actually you know, very similar. But it's pure roaches again from Hyun. The more Hydralists that come into play here for Snoot, the better the fights will go for him naturally. Hydralists are crucial in these fights. But no, no dedication from Hyun again towards that. Not yet. Hyun, what are you up to? But if he hits before... He has to go for something, right? Surely this cannot be like yes. pure roach. What do you think it's going to be? Hydralist then? Infestation pit? Bailingness? He may just go for Borrow movement again and try what he did in the previous game. That may be his preferred way to play the game, but either way, he needs to make a decision on whether it's an attack or tech choice, yeah. because once he notices that Hydralists are coming into the game, he knows the fact that he won't be able to keep up like he couldn't in the previous one either. But this doesn't really feel like an aggressive stance out of Hyun when he goes for this. It feels more like he wants to get ready in case he gets attacked. Don't you think that's weird? Well... Like he's getting a ton of roaches, but not really moving out yeah. or getting in position to attack ever. It kind of feels like he thinks he's going to be attacked any second and he wants to be ready. Well, the way that he's using his overseers, it looks like he's trying to wait till his upgrades are done while delaying snoots to hit a timing. That's the only thing that makes a lot of sense. Okay. He's going to have, I guess, uh, about 20 to 30 seconds of pure roach power. 
versus Snoot, who's very comfortable with a decent amount of Hydralis out now. Tethering class here, and uh, Burrow is going to start for Hyun. Yeah. Dude, I'm pretty sure he wants to attack before that, though. Maybe try to attack before that, do some damage, and then after, yeah. start using that Tethering class to snipe a lot of drones here and there. He wasn't able to do any damage yeah. with those in the previous game, but in this game, if he was able to take a good fight before that, he could well set himself up to maybe win this game. And Snoot is the one moving out. This might play in Hyun's favor if he can get a good surround, a good concave up against this army of Snoot. But I don't think that Snoot wants to go up the ramp and actually engage here. No, where are the Hydralisks? They need to be oh, fighting at the same back. time here. He actually does that. Oh my god. Well, Snoot's going to attack with his plus two attack just now finishing, but Hyun already had that finished. And if these roaches are defeated for Snoop, the Hydralis will be exposed here, and that's exactly what Hyun wants. They will be more than exposed. They will get executed, man. Yes, Can't they run. will. Two, three, four of them going down, and this is a very good fight here for Hyun. Yeah, he's going to be able to defend. I mean, Snoop didn't trade too badly either. Like at, at first, I was really worried. Like, you attack up a ramp like this into a concave, yeah. you're supposed to get crushed. Look at Burrow and yeah. turning Klaus. The timing here, right after the attack is done. So Hyun, it's going to be his opportunity to start doing a lot of damage everywhere here. And I'm not sure how many Overseers are, are, are ready and in position here for Snoot. Yeah. I don't think there is that many. And Snoot now is going to have to defend against Hyun's waves. And he's not in the same position he was oh, in the previous one. game. He's getting one over here. I hope it's not his only one, because otherwise he's in trouble. Snoot lost a lot of expensive Hydralis in that last fight. Going to have to replenish them slowly but surely. 42 Roaches, by the way, uh, to 33 in Hyun's favor. Yeah. Pathogen glance starts here for Snoot. Has some Hydralis scattered. If he can stabilize, if he can hold like in the previous yeah. game, he's going to be in a great position, but it's going to be so hard here. It's going to be very hard. In the, in the previous game, it was looking difficult, but he was able to manage because he was in such a lead. But this, this time, that yeah. is not the case. The goal bait is going to be hit at the same time, but Snoot saw that coming, so he moves most of his army there. But that means he doesn't have enough to defend in the main now. Yeah, and if he starts to take more critical losses, Sean is going to be able to tie this one up. He's going to keep powering this one home. He's off four bases. He's just building Roaches. He wants to finish it like he tried to in the previous game. Snoot defending on this right-hand side, but he's starting to get worn down a little bit here while also taking damage to the Queens, which is hindering his production and therefore hindering his supply count as he's dropping below 100. Yeah, he's starting to do some walkers too with and seven drones dying. He's going to break through Snoot in this game and it looks like we are going to be able to make it to game three. GG is called. Sean ties the series up. And I think it all stemmed down to that fight that, Hyun, that, that Snoop took into the rebound where Hyun yeah. was in a winning position. It's, it was quite a dream scenario here for Hyun, to be honest. Like, you're up the ramp with this concave already, yeah. and the opponent attacks into, into you. you. It's like, well, and the thing is, if he didn't attack, he had the infestation pit and infestors soon to come, and then his Hydralite was only going to continue to increase. It would have been exactly the same as the previous game, in which you're always going to be in the better shape. It was a, it was a very... Uh, probably a, a fight that he shouldn't have taken having watched the replay back when he does watch it back he'll say he didn't take it yeah. but why did he take it in the first place do you think he feel pressured was it because the gold base was up faster than his but did he not realize that Chum was again on only roaches I think he was just looking to attack see his opponent's army and once he saw it decide whether he was going to fight or not and in this case he saw Hyun's army and maybe misjudged it. Yeah. Maybe he thought it wasn't that big and there wasn't that many roaches, but God, was there a lot of roaches. Yeah. That was the fight that really turned the game around into Hyun's favor. So that's, that's definitely, I mean, if we were doing the analysis screen today, we'd look at that and try to figure out the reason for Snoot's attack. And if Snoot doubted to win his interview, we'd be asking him why he did that too. I can picture you perfectly up there being like... The weatherman trying to point out the roaches coming from different directions. <laughs> so don't do that, don't do this. Uh, all right, so game number three between these two players. So it's going to come down to, as in the previous series, True versus Lenok. One map to determine who moves on to the next stage and who has to wait another hour or so to play their final game of the evening versus a lot of hungry players down there in the low bracket fighting, killing each other, knocking each other out of the low bracket in hope to move through to group stage play. And I don't know which, uh, which one's going to move forward here. I'd, you know, favors Snoot. He seems to be playing really well, but he made he made mistakes in that last yeah. one. So he did really well the first game, though, and like this was a misstep. To me, it's still Snoot's win. Like he will, you know, regain control of the series and in, uh, in, in that last game and and win. That's my prediction. I'm not biased at all, by the way. Not at all. I not love Yon. I love Yon. I would I'd, be happy if he advanced as well. I would probably have to agree with you in, in that kind of the way that you look at it there. That, you know, Snoop can still make it through.
Um, and I really favor whoever loses this to still make it through the group anyway. Over the other two players remaining is Daisy and Czech, two teammates here, having to play against each other for the chance to play against the loser of this series. I think that's going to be on the B stream. Yeah. And hey, in open bracket one, since, uh, since True made it, Hero, he, he had one against Impact. He's uh, playing against Solky right now, and Solky's up 1-0. If Solky beats Hero, man, it's going to be two Zergs out of that one for sure. Yeah, for sure. All right, here we are. We loaded into the next map. It struck us by surprise, but we're in. And it's going to be Catalina for these two. Down here in the bottom right-hand side playing for Team Liquid. It is Snoot. <laughs> and of course, up here to the top left-hand side, playing for Rockats, it's Hyun. Nine pools are very popular here. Nine pool gas is very popular. Neither of them deciding to do that though. Well, but why is these, it so popular? Because you see a lot of hatch firsts here, uh, and then the nine pool gas is very good against hatch firsts. Well, when you do that, do you hope that the opponents will scout the wrong way at first, or is that it too. not really relevant? That too. Okay. Yeah, that 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 is very helpful too. It's funny because like StarCraft is like already such a you know very intricate, difficult, special game, uh, strategically and all that. And already on two players map or four players map, which is what we were used to for the longest time, there were so many possibilities. And then we were introduced three to three player players player maps. And then all minds yep. just blew up. <laughs> all the possibilities are followed. The spawning positions. And especially on this map too, there's definitely advantages and disadvantages of spawning in different positions. Not so much this matchup, but definitely other ones. Even like just scouting patterns in general, not even just in ZVZ. Yeah. Like, do you scout clockwise or counterclockwise? Does it matter? Like, yeah, how yeah. is it relevant? So many questions, but so few answers. Beauty of Starcraft. All right, hatch first from Snoot. Not worried about any early spawning pool here. Coming out from Kyun who does play an early spawn and pull, but more interestingly, does take the gas again, so he is going to be able to get quite an early Zergling speed. But it's not a super fast spawn and pull. It's the same build he chose in the previous game here. Which build do you like better in this situation? I do just prefer Snoots. I knew you were going to say that no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> I do prefer Snoots. Why? Because Sean is already taken away from his mineral income very early on without guaranteeing damage. Yeah. Actually, like, it kind of feels like when I see this, that in Hyun's shoes here, not even, it's not even the fact that you don't guarantee damage, it's the fact that you're almost never going to be able to do too much damage unless you yeah. choose to do something crazy, you know, you know like mass links and, yeah. and all in, which on this map definitely easier than on most other maps to wall off and all that. And Snoot has got a full scout here too. He knows exactly what his opponent's build is and is not too far away from having his own zergling speed and bailings if need be, compared to Hyun as well. We'll see how these shapes up here in a second with the two queens on the way. Four snoots. To, in terms of scouting here, is there anything special you can do with the queens to move out, chase away the overlords and like, you know, maybe sneak in Zerglings uh, too late for the opponent to react well enough to it, or...? You usually have the Overlord above the natural like you do in versus Protoss, that you can push away with an Overlord and Queen of yourself that can open yeah. up a, a position to move out. They, did they, I think they entirely skipped on Zerglings here, by the way, early on. I guess since they scouted each other yeah. first, they didn't need to sneak into Zerglings like they usually do to see the timing on the gas, if there's speed, if there's Baneling Nest, which in this case, yeah. the Baneling Nest just started here for Snoot. Shun taking out a gas here. Uh, you think all in here about out of Snoot? He's still mining gas. I think he's playing more defensive, knowing that you know Hyun had everything he had earlier. So you usually stick back to play defensive, but you don't think he's gonna make mass links and go all in? I don't know. It's it's very difficult to tell at this point. Those eight links could be defensive, but they. I mean, likewise, he can continue to build. Yeah, he's getting one more queen. So uh, actually, two more queens. So I don't think this, it's like uh, pressure. Yeah. We'll try to get in with some links. And Hyun sees defensive. Oh, man. Bane links being morphed here. It's funny, Hyun might actually get really scared from seeing, you know, that much gas being mined. <coughs> and I don't think he's seeing anything hatch out of those lavas here. Yeah. Yeah, Snoot might try to sell a story here and then drone once again like a madman behind it. Especially with that scout that uh, Hyun just got. Let's see what how Hyun reacts here. He's getting three drones and two Zerglings right now. Well, third base down nice and early here for Snoot. 
Smith styling some drones. Yeah, I don't know what, what the worker count is here between the two in favor of Hyun by five. But Smith's looking to come back in this. Well, just a small set of skirmishes here, which... Ooh, lots of links. Lots of links here being made out of Hyun, who may be overreacting as Snoot might have been hoping for. The thing is, there's going to be some counter-attack potential. And uh, yeah, the third base started. Man, this, this may be what triggered this. And yeah. the Queens, they're out of position. Where do they get... Oh my god. Well, unless I'm worried Snoot for already Snoot. has some bailings more. There is no wall off at the natural? Well, he has one bailing there, which can help. I but mean, one bailing, like... Can it buy him enough time, though? It's there are going to be transfuses on this Queen shortly as well. I guess with the Queens, <coughs> it really complements very well to have like some, a bailing like this. But it's going to be more than one transfuse. Yeah. And there's another one ready as well, which he does use. Oh. So He's still standing, Apollo. Very nice play there from Snoop. But as you said, there is no wall. This is a vulnerable area which Shun may look to exploit. Ah, another bailing. Oh, nice destination there for Shun. And he flicks back with his Zerglings here. Oh, big hits coming in for Snoot there. And he pushes that back very nicely. Snoot, 48 drones to 36 as we see Hyun with 10 Roaches on the way. Oh, Roach is going for an all-in. Hyun is going for an all-in here. Yeah, only 36 drones. That's that's very, very low. And uh, I don't think that Snoot can expect this. And he doesn't even have an overlord that close oh, to this. there's more drones being made for Snoot. Ramp. He doesn't know what's yeah. going on. He has no idea this attack is about to hit him. This is looking so strong. Even, yeah, that Overlord is not yeah. that close to the ramp. So it's, it's he's going to see that so, like, almost when it's at his third base. Yeah, and halfway through there. It's going to be a Roach Bailing attack here, and Snoot looks like he's going to be punished by this. Three drones on the way, 22 additional links coming in for Hyun, yeah, which will be used. Faster. And he doesn't see this at all. Still but drones Snoot. being made. He's completely oblivious to this. Now he sees it for the first time, and Roach is begin, but... He doesn't even have any gas in the bank to really build a lot. How good are drones against Roaches, Apollo? Not good. Snoot is in a lot of trouble right now. He did not expect this low drone two-base attack coming out from Hyun. This was so greedy out of Snoot. Even if yeah. you look at the minimap, he has an overload on each potential third base that Hyun could have taken. So he saw that there was no third base started. Why did he drone up so hard? Lack of focus and greed here, but Hyun is going to fully capitalize on this if he just strikes at the right time, which this seems to be. Roaches are on the way for Snoot. Will he be able to get them out in time, or is Hyun going to be able to take this two games to one? Yeah, he can only make Zerglings right now, Queens and Bailings. And uh, Snoo Snoo's trying to hold on, he's gonna have to pull the drones, I guess he has too many of them anyway. The Bailings, this might offer them an opportunity for the good connections, but there's yeah. still too many Roaches. You need to be able to get those Bailings on the Zerglings there, really, in an ideal situation. But as you can see, this is a very difficult one here for Snoot to hold on to. More drones coming off the line, and Hyun, with more and more Zerglings flooding across the other side of the map, is looking after losing the first game in this series to be able to take the entirety of it and to move on to group play as the second player here. And Snoot has been broken. He has been broken. Queens have gone down. There's no injections anymore. He's running out of lava. And just like that, a flick of a switch. Shun takes a big lead and looks like to end the game here. Minimal amounts of units left for Snoot as he tries to buy as much time and get as many units out as he can, but this is just getting worse. The natural's been cleared up, likewise the main, down 20 supply and more and more units streaming to the other side of the map here for Hyun. And even if somehow Snoot holds this and goes to one base to three, it's or one base to two, Hyun has more than enough economy behind this to start to transition away after killing so many drones himself. He's taken a drone lead, but he's going for the kill. He knows he's going to have the kill. And it's that Rocket Hyun is going to be our second player to move through into the group stages of the entire stream masters. GG is called. Hyun takes a 2-1 over Snoot. And Snoot now goes down to the lower bracket of his open bracket, where he must face the winner of either Daisy, which he's beaten already, or Czech. And uh, yeah, very nice games, nice series here. Um, Solky beat Hero 2-0. So he's going to be two Zerks making it out of the open bracket number one. Either Linok or Solki as second one. You wrote a very nice preview of the tournament where you said uh, that Linok gonna, is going to do well. Are you going to still stand by it and say that he's going to beat Solki? Yes, Linok will beat Solki. You never, you never change your mind, do you? No. Why would I change wrong my mind? Wrong all the way every no, time. I'm not wrong all the way. <laughs> True's through. And I knew True's going to win this tournament. I just yeah. didn't say anyone. Okay. He wins every tournament that I. Uh, that I really? Well, what was the last one that you no, predicted I mean, he was going to do well in? San Jose. And? He lost in group stage. No, yes, group stage against Snoop. He wasn't lucky. 
It's this time, though. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> okay. He's already gone through into group play, so we'll see how well he can do there. Uh, but that's it for this series all done and wrapped up. Uh, we'll be back with another series in a couple of moments.